Hey Guitar Heroes, I've uh, been kind of sick this week, but I think it's time I went over how to play Solus 5 by Exile Lord. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of really difficult sections in this song, there's a lot of pretty easy ones too, so I'll kind of skip over a lot of the easier ones. <clears throat> so yeah, it starts off with a big break. Alright, so this is something that's in all the Solus songs, is that you'll have two strums, or like, I guess one's not even a strum, but... But if you try and strum every note on these patterns, it's actually too fast. Like, you're not supposed to be strumming every note here, but the way that it's set up is kind of hard too. So like... <clears throat> so we'll start from the very beginning. So, as you could see that the first of every two notes except the first one is a hammer-on. That means you only have to strum the second note of each thing. But, um, so the, the correct way that, the, that you're kind of expected to do this is, um, so like, you'll strum down up, or I guess it's better if you start up down so that you're kind of starting this first section of two notes with a down strum but then you're like up strum on the green and then hit the red strum on the red let go strum on the green you know on the yellow strum on the yellow but um, if you can't get that down perfectly and you don't want to still fully strum like every note um, <clears throat> you can kinda like in between it I usually do like uh, triplets so I'm strumming like right in the middle of every note and every other note so if you do it perfectly you only have to strum every other note but that's really hard to get down so like uh, just listen to my strum speed while I play along with this so I'm not actually playing this this is just from a video but that's kinda like the strum speed you can keep up with. Alright, now there's a few parts like this. Now that first, that first little section... So right here... So you'll be doing your strumming parts and then you just gotta come up and go tap orange, tap orange, tap red, tap red, tap blue, tap blue, tap red. I mean it's a really fast thing and it's hard to transition into. And then you gotta go right back into this. But this part you have to do uh, one-handed, which isn't too bad. But it means that you have to uh, take your finger off of the green note to hit these parts. I'm pretty sure you have to on these. I know some Exile Lord songs kind of get you around stuff like this, but in this case I'm pretty sure you still can't hold the green while you hit a yellow-blue chord like that. <clears throat> At least not a strummed one. And then there's that part. Okay, so right here, uh, it gets really fast, just for a little section. And um, anytime it gets to parts where it's just like really fast sweeps and flurries and stuff like this, you kind of just have to uh, get into the habit of uh, s switching hands for each swipe. So like you could start off with going like blue-yellow, and then blue, yellow, red, and then yellow, red, and then red, and then red, yellow, and then red, yellow, blue. So yeah, it kind of just... It'll look like that if you're doing it right. Um, this part, you might have to rake strum. You know, where you go down, down, up, up. You know, it's kind of the best way to do really fast strumming patterns. I mean, otherwise it's going to be like... Insane speeds and it'll hurt your arm. Okay. So, <clears throat> let's look at this little part. So you got the open notes in between these sections of four, so you have to go down, up, 
down, up, down, up, down, up. And yeah, this part's a real pain. <laughs> By the way, all the methods that I'm using uh, to explain all these is mostly from watching other people. I didn't really come up with a lot of this stuff. Um, I just re I'm really good at slowing their videos down really slow and paying attention to what they're doing. Okay, now we're back to this again. So yeah, remember when I said that if you're doing this, if you're strumming every note right here, um, then it's going to be really fast. Well, in this, when you get to this part, you actually do have to strum really fast for this little section. So that is one advantage if you are just constantly strumming all the notes, is that you'll be ready for that. Okay, now this part really sucks. So there is... <clears throat> There is a way to do this. So it's it's very similar to regular chimneys, but with the one exception being this uh, green note right here instead of it being over here. So we can start off with, uh, of course, you're always holding red. So you would like tap orange and then do a zigzag. And then instead of just tapping the orange again, yeah, you would uh, move over back to the green and with the right hand instead of just tapping the orange you would go like orange red yellow and then <clears throat> so yeah it would go like tap zigzag and then so yeah orange red yellow green yellow red and then back to That sounds really complicated, and you'll have to try it out pretty slow. Um, but... Yeah, it does do this quite a bit, and then here's the same thing, but with blues instead of oranges. That's the only difference. So you just go blue, red, yellow, green, yellow, red. So yeah, you'll have to practice going like four, two, three. Because that's a pretty weird thing to get used to. And then here's another weird part, a weird chimney thing, because you've got like tap, zigzag, tap, and then one, two, and then you have to let go and then go back. Because, yeah, there's that tap open note. Okay, and it does this whole thing again. Again, uh... Whenever, whenever it comes to these sections, you should definitely slow it way down. <coughs> Play it section by section, because uh, the hardest part about this song is like transitioning between a lot of crazy sections, but a lot of individual parts aren't too hard on their own a lot of the time. Now this part, there is actually a pretty cool trick to do. So you're actually going to be holding green for this. And you can see there's a lot of uh, blue, orange, so like, you know, normally, let's say you were just tapping, there was a trail between green and blue. So you would just hold green and you would tap blue. But then, since there's blue-orange some of the time, you'll just have to like tap blue-orange, blue-orange. So yeah, right here, you're just holding green, going blue-orange, 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 and then... Then there's one that doesn't, there's two spots that don't have an orange, so you would just... But let's see how this continues. Yeah, here's another example. So you would like hold the, uh, hold green. I mean, you can hear it in the beat, how it goes. Yeah, you just treat treat all of these higher notes on these trills. As still just being part of the same trill. Um and even the same thing right here. Yeah, so if you're doing this perfectly. So you could either do it the way I was saying. 
how you would like still hold the green and then kind of you know this way you'd have to do red and yellow orange which means you'd have to do like a full on hand sweep with both of them or you could sort of like just hold the red tap the orange yellow I remember how I was saying that uh, you can't hold down a note while there's a double note being played when it comes to these tap notes for some reason it's fine <laughs> so yeah you could hold the red and do it that way and then switch back to the green and then go back to the so if you just want to move your bass note I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but hopefully you're understanding what I'm trying to say. Now this part, um, I mean, it's kind of what you would expect. So you just want to hold the green and then do each three notes with opposite hands. So you would go like 3, 2, 1, 5, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1. But yeah, you can just always hold the green and then just hit, rotate your hands hitting the other two notes. Yeah, I'm not very good at doing this. Yeah, this part, do, how, do however you want. There's, this is pretty easy. This is a very common pattern. Yeah, just with each three notes, just switch your hands. And this is all pretty uh, self-explanatory, one-handed parts. In fact, for that whole section right there, I would suggest you try just only focus on strumming. I mean, this part's really hard to focus on doing both parts, but just try to strum this section <clears throat> as it plays along. More pretty uh, simple one-handed parts. Okay, now we get to the scary looking part. So uh, when we look at this, of course we're intimidated by the, the sustain notes during all of this. Because we want to just hold the red. And you know, go blue yellow. But really, all you have to do is just hold the green with one hand and the orange with the other, and then do it that way. It's just the hard part about this is that you're using so many fingers at the same time, and it's just kind of hard to multitask that well. But yeah, basically, you can just. Uh, you could even just hold the green and the red at the same time and then do it like that with the one finger then you don't have to use two and then go three and four Cause that, that can be kinda hard yeah, then it switches to only the orange so then you can just hold the orange while you could do this the whole, the whole time And then it's just the green. I think this is the easier one. And yeah, there you go again. And 
And then they, uh, this part's pretty uh, one handable. another scary looking part. Luckily it's all fast enough we can see it all in one frame. So we've got a five note and then an open tap and then a three note and then an open tap and then a five note open tap three note and then open tap. Basically you're gonna want to use both hands here so <clears throat> you're gonna wanna hit all five with one hand let go hit one three five let go all five, let go, one, three, five, let go, and then two, four. So it would be like slap, 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 slap. Yeah. I mean, that's, it's pretty ridiculous how difficult this part is for it being so short. <laughs> but that's pretty much how you have to do this. And then here it changes up a little bit. I mean, at this part, you could also just go like hit five like this, and then one, two, five like that, and then four, two, five. So keep, yeah, always try different methods. If, if one method seems really complicated and like you just, you'll never get that down, you can always try different things or experiment with it, so. Alright, now we get to some crazy sweeps, and again, it's all going to come down to uh, just being able to two-hand solos like this. So like, let's just inch forward to, let's say this orange note's the beginning of this pattern. So like, you would just hold green this whole time, you go like 5, 4, 3, 4, 3, 2, maybe even... Maybe even like be able to hit the yellow after that too. And then four, three, two, one. I mean it's it it's just gonna be it's that's what it's gonna sound like. It's, luckily it's mostly descending, so that's always easier. <clears throat> yeah, I don't really know how else to explain this other than it's always gonna just be trading hands to play three or four notes at a time, whether it's going up or down. So, <clears throat> yeah, like right here, this 5-4-3, that would be one slap. And then 4-3-2, there's another slap. And like, you don't even have to pay attention to the greens, because those are always held down. But, yeah, sometimes you'll have it go like 3, or 4-3-2, and then 3-2-1, and then there's this random 2 in the in there again. Those are pretty annoying, but you'll just want to include it in the same sweep as these two usually. So then you would go back to 432 after that. Because, yeah, this is too fast to one hand. A solo like that. This part looks intimidating, but you could tap it or you can, uh, you can one hand this just fine too. It doesn't matter if you let go of the sustain before it's over, which you probably will for quite a while. And skip ahead all this. Yeah, it's pretty uh, easy stuff. And right here we get to a new pattern. So 
there's only one strum note out of these four. So you would strum, and then you'd hit yellow, and then you'd hit blue. It's kind of an interesting thing because you're like strumming once, and then you're tapping two notes, one after another. Because normally you're used to like holding note and strumming. But instead, you're strumming first, and then you're tapping. And you also can't tap two at the same time. So you have to strum, hit yellow, hit blue. And then... I was thinking of doing a tutorial on open note patterns. And this could definitely be part of that, but oftentimes they're not as bad as they look. <clears throat> and not much to say about a lot of this. It does get a little bit faster. Okay, that that little quick section can catch you off guard. Nah, this is another one where you just want to hold green and then go like two and then two three and then four and then two four. Yeah, you'll just have to kind of get the muscle memory down because um, it goes like single note and then double note and then single note and then double note and then single note and then double note. And then a uh, single note after that again. So it's not as bad as you might think since <clears throat> one hand is just going to be going 2, 4, 4, 2 and the other one's going to be going like a 2-3 chord, a 2-5 chord, and then a 2-3 chord. So, I mean, it'll sneak up on you and it'll take you a while to get that part down, but... Now this... Alright, here we go again. <laughs> So this part's a mix of like triplets and chimneys. Let's just slow it way down. So like right now you don't even need to tap because it's pretty slow, even at full speed. But then you get to this part and you do have to tap and it is the same kind of section. So the thing I kind of hate about these patterns is that it's not like a really simple pattern that repeats itself very a lot so it goes three two three two three two three two three two three two five That's the regular speed and yeah it does that kind of thing a lot So yeah, this part is where it really gets messed up. But again, you could uh, think of this as like 5-3-1, 5-3-1, and then like a trill in the middle of that, and then a zigzag, and then and then two triplets, and then two triplets again. I mean, it's just a bunch of really short patterns just mashed into one really fast, fast section. Now this kind of sucks because it's just like the part of the beginning but it's upside down and you can't just hold orange and tap green and red so it's something you'll really have to work on to hold green tap orange and then move it to red tap orange or just try and one hand it. Luckily you only have to move your bass note once so it goes green orange orange red orange orange. Ahead. There's a 
lot of this. And uh, here you'll really have to get your double notes down. But yeah, this you absolutely have to one hand because it's all strums, obviously. Alright, here's another crazy part. So again with the, you know, the slapping, but um, you'll see this quite a bit, how it goes like 4, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5, 3, 5, 3, 2, 1. So I used to think that you should like do the, let's say just the 4 with the tapping hand, go like 4, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. But I don't think that's really the best way when it gets really fast. What, you're, what you should do in this case is go like 4, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. 4, 3, or 5, 3, 5, 3, 2, 1. So that you can just sweep the whole thing really quick. And then, yeah, just, it does that pattern quite a bit. And so you're always looking at it as like every Every time it starts to descend again, that's when you switch hands. So you go like five, four, two, or four, three, four, three, two, one, five, three, five, three, two, one, and then he goes like five, four, five, four, three, four, three, four, three. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to break down every single note of these patterns. Next part. All right, now this is just like every other, um, just like a lot of the other soulless strumming patterns. You'll just have to tap and strum really fast. That's the thing. It's like it's a, it's a, it feels like a tapping part with how fast you have to move your fretting hand, but you also have to strum really fast for that too. But. Now this is something that's kind of interesting too because um, it's this part's actually really easy because it it uh, it stays at the same strumming tempo this whole time but yeah like you're just strumming steadily this whole time and then you're just like tapping notes in the middle of it it's just like holding down a green how you have to tap those. Yeah, there's, there's all these like really quick sections in this song where they just sneak up on you and, the, and then they're really fast. So like anytime you've got a randomly go up to tap it's usually best to uh, do this method maybe this method you know however you can to get a trill and out of the way now here again you'll be holding green let's just inch forward a little bit so yeah right here you just kinda like tap red and then tap yellow red blue red yellow red and then just orange blue orange and then right here you can just go like tap red tap red yellow tap blue yellow and then orange red and then yellow blue orange I mean yeah this is another part where you just want to slow it way down and get the muscle memory <clears throat> Now, when there's tons of uh, fast trills together, so yeah, you'll just have to like hold yellow, tap orange four times, then hold green. And that's that's really your only option. Because <laughs> yeah, you'll just have to be moving your bass note like crazy. This is all one-handable. Yeah, 
And again, you might need to resort to rake tapping or rake strumming for that. Okay, now this is kind of a break. It's pretty easy. Um, right here you could probably one hand this or you could like again alternate sweep hold all of them <laughs> all right we're back to more triplets again so these are just like regular descending triplets to move around. They're just in kind of a weird uh, tempo, a weird beat. So would you just do like three, two, one, four, or five, two, one, three, two, one, four, two, one, five, two, one. Yeah, you're just kind of. Yeah, this part's easier than it looks. Just because there's like a sustain note doesn't mean that it takes a lot more concentration, I guess. <laughs> and another big solo part. Uh, just refer back to what I've said about all of the other solos. <laughs> It's going to be hard no matter what. Now right here... Um, now since half of these notes are hammer-ons, you, re you really only have to strum like... Like just look at the red notes here with the dark circles around them. Those are the only times you'll have to strum. So it's every other beat this whole time. <laughs> Hopefully you could hear my strum bar for that. Here, I'll just go over it right here. Now again, you're gonna be holding green for this whole time. You'll be like four, or five, two, three, five, two, three. So again, you're always trading hands with each descending, whatever. But some of these are, you'll have to hit two notes, and other times you'll only have to hit one, since the second note is a green. So you'll just go like five, two, one, five, two, one, and then four, two, two, or four, three, two, four, three, two. And yeah, all of that can work out for no matter what comes up right here. So like again, five or four two four two three four two four two three four two four two three. All right, we made it to the fun part. <laughs> So let's just say this starts at the blue note right here. So the way I like to do patterns like this is the, is the simplest way, but it's probably not the best way. Because the way I look at it is like just tap orange as fast as you can while moving your bass note. So like you could just hold red and with this hand you're just going blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, yellow. And the other hand you're just uh, tapping orange as fast as you can. So that's the way I like to do it, but I'm not really the pro at this song. And what I have seen pros do is, um, so they'll hold red and they'll, uh, so instead of just seeing it as like every note individually, kind of, 
since you have to alternate your hands, you can just see it as like, so you can do one zigzag sweep at the start. Now that sounds really weird, but really all you're doing is hitting the blue and the orange and then the yellow. And when you're doing a zigzag sweep, that's what you're doing. You're, I mean, hitting the yellow first isn't going to do anything. And then you're hitting the blue, that'll hit that, and then the orange, and then that'll hit that, and then back to yellow, that'll hit that. So you've taken care of the first three notes of that little piece. And then, then you have your tapping hand that hits orange twice. So that'll be the orange after the yellow and the orange after the red. So that actually covers the entire six or seven note pattern to the the piece because you're going four five four five three five two five so really all it's going to end up being is you're holding red you're doing a zigzag and then two taps I'll just go over that little piece again so <clears throat> the zigzag takes care of the blue orange yellow and then tap orange twice and then you're back to blue orange yellow tap it twice but it's really fast and it moves around too but I mean you don't it all plays the exact same so even if it's not even if it's not just four three two so like it's four two one instead it it still all works the same but you're gonna have to zigzag further so though it's really complicated to actually get this part down and then again so yeah a zigzag and then two taps. So yeah, this part goes on for quite a bit. But then it gets even more complicated when you start having to transition from that into this. So again, <clears throat> you'll have to go like blue. So you'll be able to do the same uh, zigzag to take care of the blue, orange, yellow and then uh, tap orange twice but then you've also got to go like four three two so yeah it's a uh, you'll still be able to do your uh, zigzag double tap and then it will switch back into uh, just sort of a descending tap pattern <laughs> Sure, everyone could figure this part out for themselves. Okay, now this pattern, um, if you want to hit this whole thing, it's kind of a mix between one-handed and two-handed. So, like, you can one-hand up to this, but then you run into these, this sort of, like, double quad, which are tap notes. So what I would recommend is going like do these uh, hammer on quads with one hand but have the other hand ready so that when it goes like five four three two four three two one and then you just go five four five four three two five four three two or the other way around so yeah just uh, don't worry about tapping until you get to the tap notes other than that, just one hand it, and it should be fine. Now we get to this freaky looking thing. Okay, so the way that we look at this, it's like it's trying to trick us. Um, because it's like one, five, two, four, three, two, four, one, five. And I mean, I think a sigh does do it like this where he just kind of like slides up and down at the same time but um you could also just like do zigzag with one hand and then try and do the blue and orange with the other 
But another interesting way I've seen is to just sort of like tap. So like, okay, you're always holding green. So you'll just tap orange and then tap red, yellow, or red, blue, and then tap yellow and then red, blue, and then orange, red, blue, yellow, red, blue, orange, red, blue, yellow. Because that's essentially all you're doing here. Like, so your tapping hand can just go orange, yellow, orange, yellow, orange, yellow. And the green, yeah, your fretting hand, you'll just be able to go, you know, hitting the 2-4 a bunch of times. At least while it's doing this double zigzag. I guess this was like the original intended way of doing this pattern was doing it that way, but good luck getting that down. <laughs> but then, um... You pass by a little bit, and then, yeah, you'll just have to do like a big zigzag, maybe tap the end and then come back down. <clears throat> but yeah, I think the best way to do the X pattern is to just, you know, tap the, uh, the red, blue, the orange, red, blue, yellow, red, blue, orange, red, blue, yellow. And then it leads you towards the outro. Um, this part's pretty easy. I mean, it might be hard if you're not good at stretching your hand. But, for the most part, if you can't do this, it's more because your hand can't stretch, not because you just don't know the method. But, like... Like, something like this is pretty easy because, like, you're just holding red and or or you're holding green and orange and then you're just going blue, yellow, blue, yellow, blue. You're only changing one note out of the chord. And back to this pattern. And that about covers the whole song. Yeah, hopefully you learned something. Uh, this song is really high up there on the difficulty scale. And hopefully uh, my voice wasn't too terrible. <laughs> like I said, most of what I learned was just from watching videos of other people play. So I'm no expert on doing these patterns, but I can observe them and explain how they work. So... Uh, yeah, if you have any more suggestions for uh, lessons I can go over, just let me know in the comments. I think this was a, probably one of my longest videos because it's such a long song, but yeah, thanks for watching.